Um, let's talk about Haiti for a moment. The chaos that's been taking over that country is, is, you know, uh, is continuing. And really, Haiti is a country now without a real leader, it appears. The gangs have, have taken things over. The prime minister resigned. Food is scarce. Many people without a place to live. So uh, let's get a little perspective on Haiti. Jacqueline Charles joins us. Covered Haiti for a long time. She's the Caribbean correspondent for the Miami Herald. And I guess I was reading about it earlier, and I'd be curious to see what you're picking up. What's happening right now in Port-au-Prince? In other words, who's in charge? Well, there is an acting prime minister. He's the minister of finance. Uh, prime Minister Ariel Henry announced his intentions to resign along with his cabinet. But once this presidential transitional council is installed, um, you know, under Haitian law, the prime minister is also the head of the national security and they need to give direction to the police. And I have to tell you, after a couple of days of calm and quietness, the gunfire has started again. Um, we received reports that the gangs were out at the perimeter of the airport where they were shooting not far from the headquarters of the police. There are unconfirmed reports right now that the house of the police director possibly has been targeted and is up in flames. Um, so things are now picking back up again after a couple of days of just a, of a lull that people thought, okay, maybe we're, we're going to turn a corner here, but it doesn't look that way. Now, this has been building for quite a while. I said the other day we hadn't been paying enough attention to it maybe until, you know, uh, this week. We have a clip I think we can play here from a nursing student named, uh, J named Junior who had come to New York from Haiti three months ago, and I guess it was, it was bad then. Let's listen. I was working in Haiti, but the situation is so hard. Gangs everywhere, and then I have, I have children. I have nothing to do. I couldn't stay, even though I wanted, but I couldn't stay. Couldn't stay then. You can only imagine, as you were describing what it's like now, what about the people and, and what they're going through, the humanitarian situation? No, it's a very difficult situation. You have about 1.4 million people away from famine, according to the World Food Program. We already have more than 360,000 Haitians who have been displaced from their homes. Um, that's in the last couple of years. And with this recent violence, there have been thousands more who are already forced out, now being forced out further. And while all of this is taking place in Port-au-Prince, you have to remember, that's the center of everything. Haiti depends on imports, more than 50 percent. The mm -hmm. seaport is shut down because they attacked at the airport is not functioning because of no international flights. There's no maritime bridge that was used or air bridge. So now the other regions of Haiti are going to start to feel the pinch as a result of what's happening in the capital. And we already were talking about almost 6 million Haitians who didn't have enough to eat. So it's a very right. difficult situation and frightening on top of it. I wonder about this transitional government and its chance for success. This gang leader that everybody keeps talking about that's named, uh, you know, the nickname is Barbecue, but I keep hearing you know, that name over and over again. Uh, there was a message on WhatsApp is an audio message, but it sounded like a threat to even the new uh, prime minister was something like, hey, don't you have any shame? You, you've taken the country where it is today. You have no idea what will happen. So it's not just Prime Minister Henri, right? It's this uh, this new government. Or, you know, will they be able to function? Well yeah, so what it represents, you know, there's a sense of that this is huge. Well, there is a huge inequality in the country, the haves and the have nots. And what you hear from Jimmy Cherizier, a.k.a. Barbecue, is he's always talking about this in terms of how the country got to this place. And so there's a lot of questions, even among some of the groups that are participating, whether or not you can run a country with a presidential council of, you know, nine members, seven of whom mm -hmm. will have voting rights. Who will be in charge? We're still waiting for that presidential council to come together. There's infighting going on. Not all of the names are in. There's a lot writing on it. I mean, the U.S., the U.N., there's a multinational right. security support mission that Kenya says that they want to send, they want to help, but they're not going to do it if there's not a functioning government in that country. Well, I want to talk a little bit more about the U.S., not only their involvement in trying to help, but the effect on the U.S., because we're talking about this right after we wrap with you, Jacqueline. The Ron DeSantis tweet, governor of the state of Florida, you're at the Miami Herald, um, is kind of interesting. I could put it up for you. Uh, given the circumstances in Haiti, reading the highlighted portion here, I've directed the Division of Emergency Emergency Management, Florida State Guard, state law enforcement agencies to deploy over 250 additional officers and soldiers, over a dozen air and sea craft to the southern coast of Florida. So he's talking about the way he said, you see that, protect our state. Uh, what's going on in Florida? Well, I don't know what's going on in Florida, but I can tell you that right now in Haiti, things are landlocked and we're not seeing any sort of a migration wave. All this is always a concern, but we do know that Governor DeSantis has made migration a benchmark of his whole administration. It was part right. of his campaign for president. But right now, we're not seeing any reason to say that Haitians are getting on boats. They can't even get out of the capital. The right. gangs are controlling the roads. So that's a political statement, and that's what you're saying from your reporting. There's nothing more to it. It's basically what you're saying. 
I'm saying my reporting does not meet that at this moment. It may change Fair. tomorrow, but as of now, no. Fair. Uh, Jacqueline, thank you um, from the Miami Herald with us today. Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.